I was getting ready to make another Ed Puzzle today, so I thought I would record my screen so that others could see how to use Ed Puzzle. So I'll go to Ed Puzzle and log into your account or create an account. Um, it does work with Classroom and your Google account. You can see here I've got a couple of the ones that I sent out the other day, but I would just go to My Content and then you have a Create button. I want to create a new video. And you can search for different topics, and you can see on the left-hand side here, you can search my school, and that's where uh, Noel was saying that as more teachers make them, you could have access to each other teachers. Uh, you can see here Drew Carlson's, Noel's, um, in language is where I would be with Ellswick. But down here you have different ways to search. So you can search just Edpuzzle and see if anybody has created one already based on your topic. So I wanna do verbal today and I was just going through here and trying to find some and not really liking what I was finding. So then you can go to YouTube and search different YouTube videos. And if you're familiar with one, you could be looking for a certain one. Um, they have Khan Academy, National Geographic, TED Talks, all different places to search. I typically use uh, YouTube videos so when I search verbals, I've already watched a couple of these and kind of figured out which ones are better. Some of them, not so good. Um, a couple of them that I liked was this one and this first one up here. And I think I'm gonna go with this first one. So you can click on it and watch it again if you wanna be sure. Or you can say use it, or you can say copy. So if you click on it and watch it, you'll have those options too. So you could say, I just wanna make a copy of it and then later on come back and use it. But I'm gonna use this specific one. And then it brings up this toolbar where you can crop it, crop out like the beginning and the ending. Uh, this is where you have the audio track. Uh, verbals. Verbals are verbs that act. I haven't actually used that much, but what you can do is actually create your own audio track for it audio notes and the questions. I typically just use the questions and as a beginner, that's what I would say to do. Up here in the corner, you have save and finish. You could save it and then work on it later or if you wanna just finish it. So just to pretend here, I'm just gonna do a few quick questions uh, randomly just to show you how to use that feature and then I'll come back and actually make it for real. Verbals. Verb right now it's still on the audio track. So I want to go to the question one. And you can see it wants to put a question right there. If I'm like, oh, I don't want to put it there. I was wrong. You can actually move the question down to where you want it. You can listen again. So you got the question tab and up here it says, uh, show me how if you want to see how to do it. But I just put the question mark and then I click on the question. And you have several choices. So one, you could just have an open-ended question, which those you're gonna to have to come in and grade manually. But it doesn't take that long because you can select all the students at once and do that. And I'll show you that in a little bit what that looks like. You can have a multiple choice question and you can add several answers. So if you wanna make it like four, which is a typical multiple choice, then you can do that. And it will actually stop the video and have the students answer the question. If you saw mine the other day that I sent out, you can see what that looks like from a student's perspective. Or you could just make a comment. Sometimes they just wanna say, hey, remember this is whatever, or uh, just put in a teacher comment there, which is something that wouldn't necessarily be graded. So basically you have open-ended, multiple choice, and just a comment. So let's say that I wanna say, remember this is acting as another part of speech, not a verb. Okay. Then you would keep doing that. You could say continue, and the video is going to continue. Is wanting, and to eat cookies is the thing that he wants. Listen to. Then, as soon as you want to put another question, you just click the question. And then, once again, you pick what kind of a question, type it in, pick which one's the right choice, and then say save. Then you would say save and finish. Then you can assign them to a class, share with anyone. And that's how I shared with all of you, because when you share with somebody outside of one of your classes, uh, you want to give them that link and not the one that you assigned to a class. 
you can send it right directly into classroom or you can just assign it to them and then when they log they can log right into edpuzzle and not even have to go to classroom to do it you can put a due date i'm going to get out of here just to show you what it looks like once it's done so when i come back here you can see this is something that i've assigned to them you could post it to classroom um, I usually just take the link and then make an assignment in there and do it that way so that it's posted the way I want it to look with my directions, but you could post it directly there. Um, you could share this assignment. Um, once again, once you share that assignment with like staff or people outside of Norris, they're not going to be able to access it unless they have a Google account. You want to use that other one uh, within the actual video, your content back here and share it with anyone. Here's progress, and so I can go in and you can see that 99%, 98% have completed it, and that's probably because I also have a dummy student in my class, yes, test kid one, who hasn't done anything, and it also includes me. But you can see my students have all completed it, and I've graded it. When I have any grading to do, like on those open-ended ones, that's where I would find it here, and it would be listed with their answer, and I can just real quickly go through and say 100%, 10%, 30%, however much I want to get for those open-ended questions and it will tabulate it but you can see real quickly i can have the student scores and in power school if you didn't know this you can make a grade worth even if it's like 10 questions in a puzzle or eight questions i had one time and i'm like i don't want to sit there and try and figure out percent how many questions right because ed puzzle does everything in percents in here you can make an assignment worth percent and then you just enter the percent and they see on the other end how many points they got so right here is where you could make it worth percent and then you can real quickly just enter 70 percent even if it's uh like a eight point assignment or 16 point assignment you could make it worth percent and then you just enter the percent for that assignment makes it really handy to enter ed puzzle grades into PowerSchool. So that's just a quick, quick rundown on how to use Edpuzzle. If you'd like more information, come and see me and we can walk through it together. But I just thought today, since I was getting ready to make one during my plan, I'd real quickly make a video using Screencastify, which I use almost daily.